Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our Red Gamer Citadel video review. We're going to be taking a look at the Athlon X4845 processor and the MSI A68HM motherboard. Now these were review samples, but as a full disclaimer, we were not paid to produce these videos. All opinions are our own, and this is not sponsored content. The CPU is targeting gamers on a budget, with the 845 retailing at under 70 US dollars. Featuring the excavator architecture, it's designed for power efficiency improvements and better performance compared to older generation CPUs from AMD. The CPU is a quad-core design, operating between 3.5 and 3.8 GHz with a 2 MB of level 2 cache, and a redesigned cooler for quieter operation. The CPU does only feature PCIe 3.0x8, but it's still ample bandwidth for the mid-range GPUs that the processor is designed to be paired with. Our test rigs pitted the 845 against an overclocked Intel i7-4770K. Both were featuring the same GTX 960 graphics card and exactly the same graphical settings were used throughout both games. You'll notice that both systems were fairly close to one another in terms of performance, with the i7 definitely having a slight advantage, particularly in minimum frame rates, but even so, the 845 for a budget processor was rather impressive and largely featured enough performance with the quad-core design to keep the GPU being relatively well fed. We suspect this processor may well be very appealing for individuals who are looking to say build a secondary system for LAN parties or maybe for their living room for light gaming or even as a primary system if you're on a smaller budget. With it being the middle of summer here in the UK and ambient room temperatures around the mid-twenties, we decided to reduce the cooling of the board by not having fans or anything else blowing across it, instead of just focusing on the standard heatsink and fan as well as the GPU fan. Even so, temperatures managed to be, during gameplay, below 50 degrees the large majority of the time, even when the CPU was boosting to 3.8 GHz with the cooler remaining unintrusive in terms of audio levels. I suspect a lot of individuals will be interested on this as a streaming based processor as well, whether that would be streaming from a main rig via Steam, or whether it be something along the lines of Netflix or other such usages. Switching to the synthetic benchmarks, we've switched out the 4770K as our primary means of comparison and instead focusing on processors within the same pricing bracket, simply because of course there's no way that an 845 could compete with such processing power. With that said, if you still want to see the i7 scores, you can take a look at the left hand side of Cinebench for example and you can see what a typical system would be able to put out. It's obvious through the synthetic benches that yes, the Athlon is capable of basic 3D rendering and video encoding, but we suggest it only as a, an occasional usage scenario. And instead what this processor really exceeds at is budget gaming, streaming and general desktop usage. Indeed, we suspect that the majority of gamers would not be able to tell if they were using a mid-range GPU that they were gaming on an 845 compared to a much higher end CPU with the majority of games.
Turning our attention to the A68 HM grenade motherboard from MSI, it sports an FM2 Plus socket, support for two sticks of DDR3 memory in dual channel, operating up to 2133 MHz. And despite the board's small size at just 30.5 times 23 times 76 cm, it manages to cram four SATA 3 ports, two USB 3.0 ports at the rear, along with four USB 2.0 an Ethernet, an audio connectors, a plethora of frontal headers, and the usual assortment of HDMI, DVI, and VGA ports, none of which you'll be using since you'll be pairing the 845 up with a discrete GPU anyway. The board's BIOS is comprehensive enough for most enthusiasts, allowing you to overclock the processor, adjust the multiplier, voltages, memory timings, memory voltages, and just about anything else that you could imagine. One really nice feature is M-Flash which allows you to back up and restore your BIOS from any USB flash disk, which is really handy. For example, if you've managed to damage your BIOS, it can be used as a portable BIOS chip, which is able to actually boot your PC. Testing our hand at overclocking, we used MSI's command center to boost the FSB from 100 to 105 megahertz, where we got the processor topping out at 4 gigahertz. We had no stability issues whatsoever, with temperatures ranging from low 50s to mid 50s, with no external fans other than the CPU fan running at auto. And once again, it was pretty much inaudible. MSI's command center allows you to tweak various voltages, adjust turbo speeds if you want, for example, silent operation, and set individual fan profiles for chassis fans and other such things. Overall, our experience with the 845 has been extremely positive, and we don't hesitate to recommend this processor as of right now for a budget gaming build. If you were to pair it with something along the lines of a GTX 960, an RX 470, a 380X, or something along those lines, you're going to have yourself a really nice budget gaming build, which is going to be able to run most games pretty damn flawlessly. With that said, hopefully you've enjoyed this review. We're still tweaking the format a little bit as it's quite different to what we're normally used to doing. But with all of that said, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Um, I'll see you soon. Remember to subscribe if you want more stuff. We're going to be reviewing a lot of hardware over the next couple of weeks, including a GTX 1070 and RX 480, headsets, keyboards, and well, putting out regular technical analysis. With all of that said, Take care of yourselves, guys. Bye for now.